the bell icon to turn on notifications. We've made the files the instructor uses in this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Word 2019 Advanced. We're down in section 5 where we're taking a look at how to jazz up our documents a little bit with graphics and pictures. And in this module, I'm going to introduce you to something that's reasonably new. When I say reasonably, it was released in Word 2013, and that is icons and 3D models. So let's start out with icons. So on the screen here, I am starting to design a brochure for a company called Bytech. And this company buys and sells laptops. And this first page is a very simple design. We just have a background image. We have some formatted text and then I've drawn three circles which are just shapes and added text boxes inside them. What you also might notice is that I've changed the orientation of this page to landscape. And what I'm aiming to do here is I want to make this first page look a little bit more interesting by utilizing icons as opposed to the text that we currently have. Now you'll find your icons on the insert ribbon. In the illustrations group, you should see a little option there that says insert an icon. And the screen tip says insert an icon to visually communicate using symbols. And you'll see this a lot when you're looking at different websites, brochures, documents. These days, it's a lot more modern to utilize images, icons, vector graphics, as opposed to words. So let me show you how you can utilize icons to jazz up this first page of the brochure. Now, I want to put an icon in each one of these three circles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this first circle. And what I can see immediately is that I've grouped these circles together. So when I was moving these into position and aligning them, I grouped them. So the first thing I want to do is I want to ungroup these objects. So I'm going to right click, go to group and select ungroup. Everything is now an individual object. So I'm going to click on the first circle. I'm going to go up to insert and click on the icons button. And what this will do is it will open up Word's icon gallery. And you'll see all of the icons that you have access to to insert into your document arranged by category. And the categories are listed in alphabetical order. So you can jump to any particular category that you want. Alternatively, you can use the scroll bar on the right hand side just to have a browse through all of the different categories. Now, there aren't thousands and thousands of icons in this gallery, but there are enough in there that you can usually find something that's appropriate for what you want to do. Alternatively, if you have an idea of what you want to insert, you do have a search bar at the top where you can search. So if I was searching for shopping, I can type in shop and it gives me all of the relevant icons. Click the cross to clear the search. Now this first icon I want to insert is going to represent the About Us section of this brochure. So when I'm thinking about About Us, I'm thinking about people, the people who work at this company. So I'm going to type in people into my search box and straight away it brings me back all of these options. Alternatively, I might want to type in something like us and again I get a few different options. Now, I quite like this icon, pretty much represents the About Us section. So I'm going to select the icon and then click on Insert at the bottom. Now you'll see on my first page, I have the boundary. So this is where my icon actually is, but I can't see the icon because it's hidden underneath the background layer that I have. And you'll see we have that little Layout Options box once again. So here, I want to change this from in line with text to in front of text. And that's going to pull that icon to the front. So I now have my icon. And the good thing about these icons is that you can edit them. So if you don't like the color, you can definitely change the color utilizing that graphics tool format ribbon. So what I might want to do here is change the color of this icon to white. So I'm going to jump up to Graphics Fill and select White from the palette. I also have Outline options, so I could outline it in black or a different color. So maybe let's try a bright blue, something like that. And I can also resize it. 
So if I drag out and drag in again, it's a resizable graphic and it doesn't distort in any way. I'm going to drag it across and I'm going to place it in there. Now, looking at it, I don't particularly like that blue outline. So I'm going to go up to outline and I'm going to say no outline. And to me, that looks a little bit better. So now I have my graphic. I don't really need my text. So I'm going to go in and delete out my text box and I'm going to make this graphic slightly bigger. And what I want to do now is align this graphic directly in the center of this circle. So for this, we can use our alignment tools. I'm going to select the icon, hold down my shift key and also select the shape. I'm going to jump up to my format ribbon and in the align group, I'm going to say align middle and also align center. And now I know that that graphic or that icon is dead in the center of that circle. Now let's do the same for the next one. This time I want an icon that represents shop. So up to insert and into icons and I'm going to type in shop. And I think I'm going to use this little icon just here, the shopping basket and insert. And once again, we just need to change that layout to bring that to the front. Now this time I'm going to have a slightly different color. Let's go up to graphics fill and I'm going to have a nice bright blue color or aqua as it's called. Now I need to resize this and really to keep things consistent, I want this to be the same size as the previous icon that I inserted. But it's a bit difficult to judge that when you're just dragging those resize handles. So one way that you can do this is if you click on the first icon and jump up to the graphic tools format ribbon in the last group, it's going to show you the size of that current icon. So I can see it's 5.08 centimeters high and wide. So then what I can do is just click on the second icon and manually change it to match. So we want 5.08 and there we go. And I can now drag that down. I'm going to delete out this text box that says shop. I'm going to drag that over and I'm going to center it within the circle. So let's select the circle as well. Up to format, down to align, align middle and align center. Like so. And then finally, I want an icon to represent contact. So once again, insert, icons. And this time let's type in contact. Now I'm not too keen on those search results. So I'm going to try something else. So I'm going to type in phone and let's just use this little image of a phone. Insert. I'm going to pull it to the front by bringing it in front of text and I'm going to change the fill. And this time I'm going to go into more fill colors because I want this kind of pinky red color. I'm going to jump straight across to custom and let's go over here. I'm going to drag that down a little bit. And yes, that is the kind of color that I want. Click on OK. Close the layout options. And once again, I want to make sure that this is exactly the same size as the other two icons. So I'm going to jump straight up to height and width. And once again, change this to 5.08 and hit enter. Let's delete out our text box that says contact, drag our icon over. And once again, I'm going to select by holding down shift, both the icon and the circle up to format into a line, a line center and a line middle. And there we go. So very quickly, we've been able to add these really nice looking modern icons, which look so much slicker and cleaner than having text all over the screen. So icons are a great way to add a visual element to your documents. Let's now take a look at something a little bit different, and that is 3D models. So I'm going to scroll down onto page two of this brochure, and this is where we have our product page. And on the left hand side, we just have a little text box that's showing us some information about the X Pro 5.0 HD laptop. And it might be quite nice to have a picture of the laptop that you can move around and see all the different elements that make up that laptop. 
and 3D models are exactly what they say on the tin. They're pictures that you can insert into your documents, but they have an interactive element. You can click on the picture, you can spin it around and get a 360 view of the picture. So let's see how they work. We're going to jump up to insert and in the illustrations group, we have a 3D models option. I'm going to click the drop down and I can choose to insert one from a file. So if I have some kind of 3D model saved off, I can do that. Alternatively, I'm going to select one from an online source. And this brings up your online 3D model gallery. And much like the icons, all of the models are categorized. So if you want to, you can have a little browse through. So if we click on animals, you can see all the different 3D models that we can insert. Alternatively, we do have a search bar at the top, which allows us to search for whatever it is that we're looking for. So I'm going to click the back arrow to come out of the animals category, and I'm looking for a picture of a laptop. So I'm going to type in laptop and hit enter. And here we go. I have a whole host of different laptop images. So I think I'm going to select this one and I'm going to insert it into my page. Now, these 3D models are quite intensive when it comes to their size. So sometimes there is a little bit of a delay from when you select the model to when it actually inserts into your document. Now, mine was pretty quick, which was good. And I'm going to make sure that I have my layout option set to in front of text, which I do. And I'm actually going to drag this down and place it on this second page. Now I'm going to resize this again, so I'm going to drag it out like so. And when I say these models have an interactive element, I'm talking about this little round circle in the middle. If I click, I can literally drag the model around so I can see everything related to this particular picture. So if I'm trying to demonstrate a product and I want to show the different ports on the side, I can hold it at that angle. Or if I want people to see the front of it, I can do exactly that. Now, these 3D models also have their own contextual ribbons. So if you click at the top on the format ribbon, you can see we have lots of different options related to this 3D model. So I can rotate it by using different views like so. And I can also change my 3D model so I can go back in and select a different one from online sources. I can reset the 3D model. So if I've done lots of changes to this, if I've resized it, rotated it, and I just want to reset it back to how it was when I inserted it, I can choose to reset the 3D model or reset 3D model and size. And then I have all of the regular options that you'll find when it comes to inserting pictures. So things like bringing it to the front, sending it to the back. So sending it behind the background, essentially which I don't want to do. So I'm going to bring that to the front and I can choose how I want my text to wrap around this particular object and also the position. But currently I'm pretty happy with how that looks. And I really like the fact that it is interactive so people can come in and they can move around the product. So 3D models are another great way of adding visual elements into your documents. And if I jump up to view and choose multiple pages, I think you'll see that this document is really starting to stand out and look a lot more interesting than it was before we added in these images. That's it for this module. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the files the instructor used in this tutorial and follow along, click over there and click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.